Hello friends. We are back with a new topic. Just uh, last class we uh, we can say almost completed because more things can be said. Uh, the culture and anarchy by Matthew Arnold. Just completed we can say. Before that the study of poetry by Matthew Arnold and literary criticism right from Aristotle up to Matthew Arnold, now we have covered. Now we have a new topic, the archetypes of literature. The archetypes of literature. You know the fifth part of the wasteland, you have got two lines, what the thunder, thunder said. What the thunder said. Here is no water, but only rock. Rock and no water and the sandy rock. So you have two lines like this. Probably you might have, these lines might have gone deep into, into your maybe memory and memory mixing, memory and desire. No? Yes. So here is no water. Here is no water but only rock. But only rock. Rock and no water, isn't it? It's no water, but a little rock. Rock and rock and no water and the sandy road and the sandy road. So here you will find a very interesting thing. And what is that interesting thing? You saw the word water. Water, here you will find, there is no water but only rock. Rock, also repeated, rock and no water in the sandy rock. So what happens here is that, you are using water as a water, water. See, you don't say this is water and that's why, no, please don't <laughs> think that I am, I am becoming fashionable before you. See, and not that. Today we will pronounce it like this. Pronounce it. Water. So now, water actually is a symbol. You know that, isn't it? It's a symbol. Water is a symbol. And this symbol, it has got many meanings. See, I will take some of the, some, some of the works, some of the famous literary works where this water is used as a symbol with different meanings. For example, in the wasteland it has got a, a, a life-giving symbol. It tells you about life. It's now water only rock means there is no life. That is description of the, our old, the April is the cruelest month. Reading the relics out of the dead land. Mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with the spring rain, this winter kept us warm, etc. So that is the theme. There is water, then there is life. Here there is no life, no water. Then you see in Macbeth, it has got a, it is a symbol of cleansing, purifying, washing, multitude in the sea, sin karma dying. So that is time to wash. You find, uh, just before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, you find Pilate washing his hands. So cleaning, he says, I have nothing to do with this man. So that's cleaning, Macbeth, cleansing. When you come to Tempest, you will find it has power of transformation. That is, look, those are pearls that were his eyes. So transformation is taking place to and tempest is actually it's all from beginning to end it's water. Many functions it has. Water is a not only a symbol there, it is a character there. Like Thomas Hardy's Eggdon Heath. In uh, many of his novels, uh, particularly you will see the novel Far from the Mighty Cloud. Eggdon Heath is Eggdon Heath is a character. It's a symbol also. Now, that's different now we are considering only water. 
the tempest. Look, those are pearls that were his eyes. See? Now, when you find this uh, symbol, you find this symbol in in a wide variety of works. I have just given him uh, half a dozen now. Water. So, a wide variety of works. You find a theme or a symbol or an image. It can be an image, it can be a theme, it, it can be a symbol, it can be uh, uh, certain kinds of structures. See? Then what do you call them, you know? There's a name given by Northrop Fry, a Canadian critic, literary critic. He says that if you find certain things like this, water, I have taken the example, in a wide variety of works, then you can call such, found in a wide variety of works, themes, etc., you can call them the archetypes of literature. The archetypes of literature. That is primordial themes. Primordial. Primordial themes. Primordial. Means they were existing right from the very beginning. The moment literature was born. So you can see humans started the storytelling, that is the, I think the beginnings now of literature, storytelling. You will find that certain themes right from the time when literature began, it continues and you will find it in a wide variety of works. And such themes, symbols, imagery, etc., images and so on, characters can be See, by certain structures, find a wide variety of works. You call them literary archetypes. Archetypes. Primordial themes. See, further I will give you examples. Plenty of examples again. Another literary archetype is, now we can speak using that word archetype, literary archetype. Means found in a variety of works, a wide variety of works, not one or two. Second one is what I have already told is symbol. Many. I just given you few. We can find out any number. And then second archetypal theme or archetypes. First one is your uh, water symbolism. Water symbolism. Symbolism. Water symbolism. Now second one is you can see you know the story of Saurabh and Rasta. Something. Saurabh goes in search of his father. Lost and found. Like the hide and seek. That, that uh, basic instinct in children. I guess. The first, when children start moving, the first trick or the play, their play begins with hide and seek. Now what is this hide and seek? Lost and found. That's a second and probably you find in almost all the works of letters. If you closely analyze this. So second archetypal theme is lost and found. Lost and found. Archetypal means, I hope you understand, found in a wide variety of works. Example you want? The tempest, lost, kingdom lost, kingdom found. And then you have what? La Belle Dame Sans Mercy. That is the famous ballad by John Gase. The knight lost himself, finally he found himself. Hamlet, very famous, you know, lost and found. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Finally, the rotten things have been removed and established, peace established. You find uh, the prodigal son symbol. Prodigal son, the son lost and the son found. The wasteland, 
Waste land. The land lost, the land found. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Home they brought her by their debt. Yes. Small poem by Tennyson. She lost her, then she found her. And then she cries. Sailing to Byzantium, by uh, by uh, WDX, he lost, finally, he lost his existence, temporary, ephemeral, and finally he finds the permanence. Once out of this form, I shall, uh, once out of this, I, uh, I mean, meaning is that once I change that is uh, my mortal coil, if I shuffle and, and change this mortal coil, what will I do is, I will never go back to the human form, but I will such a shape, such a form as the, as the Grecian goldsmiths made. Permanence. Lost and then he found. Permanence. Certain. And then he find the wind hover. The poet finds his justification for sacrificing his life and becoming a priest. What a biographical poet. The Vinhova. Mahabharata stories, plenty. The meeting of Yamaraj and uh, uh, Yamaraj and uh, Yudhishthira. Somewhere on the banks of the lake, he finds all these bodies lying dead. There is a there is a debate, or you can say a dialogue between a dialogue between or a dispute between what we can call Emaraj and uh, Yudhishthira, and finally he finds there's a lost and found. Isn't it? Lost and found. Then you find Ramana, Sita, Sri Rama, Triangle, Lost and Found. See that? In Mahabharata. Mahabharata there are many. And like Duryodhana at the end of the Mahabharata, Kurukshetra battle, what does he say? After all, what is the use of all these things? My great fathers, my gurus, all dead, lying dead. What is the use of these things? So he finds the, the real meaning of life. That a war or violence will never solve a problem. To only make things complicated. So lost and found. Understand? So you have got, in the, you take any work, you will find this. Lost and found. Brownings, the patriot, finally he is Epiphany. There is a revelation. All this popularity is so ephemeral, of no use. So he finds himself. But it's called Sudarshan. The reality dawns on him. So this theme you will find in every, in almost all the works of literature. Understand that? Almost all the works of literature. So that is another literary archetype. Lost and found is a literary archetype. Then, a third literary ar archetype is certain literary recurring patterns. Lost and found theme. Recurring, recurring patterns. Recurring patterns. What are the recurring patterns? You find hero, villain, heroine, a schemer, and somebody who gives advice to advice to the end, and then the complication of the plot and all those. Things. It's very simple. This is this you find in a literary a wide variety of literary works, isn't it? You find that. So this is again you will find a literary architect. recurring patterns, patterns. You will find repeated again and again. Understand? And you will find the revelation also. Already I told you, revelation. 
the bishop's candlesticks is a revelation. The thief, Jean Valjean, he recognizes how God loves him. Again, uh, you remember that story, that, that master's masterpiece of cross story, that short story, you remember? God sees the truth but waits for the great revelation at the end. Lost and found and then revelation. That's the thing. So this is, you'll find that in uh, recurring things. So these are literary archetypes, recurring patterns, recurring themes. And then again you will find pre literary this, this is archetypes, is also the archetypes of literature, archetypal criticism. Criticism. This is also, this also you will find a search for, a quest for preliminary categories. Sorry, not preliminary, but pre literary categories. Pre-literary categories. What is this pre-literary category? It means found everywhere, in every culture. Well, if you take, if you really a detailed study of anthropology, you will find that. Of course, that is not our area now for the time being. You can take up anthropology anytime, that's a different thing. But what you find is pre-literary themes. Pre-literary categories. So it's in search of that. A kind of literary archaeology. The archetypes of literature or archetypal criticism is a kind of literary archaeology. And what do you get in the literary archaeology? You find archaeology. You find what do you find? Magic. Yes. All the rituals begin with magic. The primordial form of rituals. What do you see? A lot of rituals now around you. We are surrounded by rituals from birth to death. Now that is began with magic. Uduism. Uduism. See? Still practiced by the aborigines. Rituals, myths, magic, folk tales, folklore, legends. Myth. You know what is myth? See, myths. The Greek myths. Mythical criticism. Mythical method. You find Ulysses. James Joyce Ulysses is mythical method. Narration. And uh, Iliad's The Wasteland is also mythical method is used. Myths. How many myths that he is referring in the in the uh, Vesla? Vegetation myth. So you have what what he got. So that again is another pre-literary search for pre-literary pre -literary categories like myths, legends, magic, folk tales etc. That is also archetypes of literature. These are archetypes of literature. See that. And then you will also find another type of another type of archetypes. Quest myth. Quest. Very famous, you know. In you will find in, in the Westland also you will find that. Holy Grail. The night the Knights of the Round Table Conference. Isn't it? The what happens? One of them goes on a long journey. Hazardous journey. Quest. Quest it. Beulf. Beulf. It's a quest it. Travels from his land and crosses uh, the seas and comes to a place where it's a quest, search, searching for the dragon. It's a quest. Understand? Holy Grail, searching for the Holy Grail. It's a quest. The journey of the Magi <coughs> is a quest. Searching. Even the prodigal son is a quest. Because 
The moment the prodigal son left his home, his father was, he was not going after him, but psychologically, mental energy he was sending towards him. Understand? So that's again a question. The gift of the Mahdi, not journey of the Mahdi, gift of the Mahdi, Stella and Jim, it is a question. Why does they were searching for how to make the partner happy? Searching, searching for it. Like this. So these are question myth. Uh, or a journey is made. Long journey is made in search. Search for the El Dorado. That is a question. The Puritans. Long journey to America, it's a question based on that how many works of literature have been produced. Question. Understand? So, when you say archetypes, what is archetypes? Archetypes means themes, symbolism, themes lost and found, recurring patterns, Pre-literary categories and journey, quest. These are found in a wide variety of literary works. And these are archetypes, literary archetypes. So since you are searching for it, a systematic way, you call it literary archaeology. So what is archetypes of literature? This literary archaeology. We are finally trying to find, go back, see, and found the origins of this. Lost and found is widely used. Where you will find here the, the far from the madding Lord Thomas Hart is the erudious thread. What is the finally this finding? Lost and found. Gabriel Oak and Bathsheba Avadi. Lost and found. Yeah, I hope you understand. So you got the idea now. What is meant by the archetypes of literature? Means found in variety, found in wide variety of literary works in different forms. Can be symbolism and imagery and so on. The themes like lost and found, recurring patterns like a we have seen hero, villain, and so on. Preliminary categories like magic and so on. And questionment. Questionment is very. You know, the, the whole, the baseline can be considered as a questionment. The protagonist's quest for peace and prosperity. The protagonist's quest for prosperity. And then at the end, this is the Himavant reign. Then. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So the turbulent land has been, has gained peace. See? Again you find that, you can also say about uh, uh, lost and found Duryodhan. We already seen Duryodhan. So the, or in between you will find themes like the lost and found. Like but lost, finally, when you found he understood the meaning of the equivocations of witches, then he found himself. That's the thing. So lost and found. And the kingdom also. Peace descends on the kingdom. Right? Peace lost, peace found. In fact, of all the primordial themes in literature, I think, and you also think, I think, I think, you also think, I think, what lost and found is a basic theme in literary works. Not only in English literature, but every literature. Lost and found. Foster Smith, lost and found. Finally, he recognizes an epiphany, a revelation that Jesus Christ had shed his blood for saving his soul. So the agony of that man, lost and found. And Troilus and Christ, she lost. 
then finally he found the Greek in the diamonds. She leaves the Trojan Troilus and goes with the Greek diamond. Lost and found. So this such themes, you know, in literature. You have to find out. If you want to find out, you cannot sit in an easy chair, question the easy chair and say, oh it is right. No. You have to make ex excavations. Literary ex excavations. <laughs> Something is blocking me when I say excavation. So literary excavations. I said, that is literary archaeology. And what will you find? You will get literary archetypes and then put them together. You have a theory. A theory. And what is the theory? The theory is archetypal criticism. Trying to understand the works. What is criticism about? Just trying to understand a literary book. Now you can do it in many ways. Biographical criticism is there. And now when you come to the postmodern and uh, uh, post structuralist approaches, oh, this plethora of approaches. Like you have got, uh, you have got what uh, phenomenology, uh, application of phenomenology, hermeneutics, oh, I don't know. Uh, what other thing is, you have this uh, Derrida's uh, deconstruction, <laughs> isn't it? And uh, you have other theory, Marxist criticism, feminist criticism. All different ways of trying to understand the work of art. Different ways of trying. You have linguistic criticism. Right? Yes. So, this is how we proceed. This was an introduction. I just, today I just was trying to uh, put before you what is meant by an archetype. Where would you find it? What are the different forms of archetypes? How to reach the archetypes? Archetypes are primor primordial things, existing right from the very beginning, prime, first, primordial things. Different forms you find. You find about five different forms. And there is another one more form you can see, epiphany. Epiphany. What is epiphany means? Revelation. Yes, epiphany. Finally, you come to understand. See the end of the crucifixion of two thieves. The thief on the right side, epiphany. He understands. A revelation. The, the reality dawns on him that I am a sinner. Jesus Christ is the Savior. That is also many words of this you will find. Many, so half a dozen different forms, even plus half a dozen I have just listed for our well, this is not a research paper or a research class, a class on a, a research based class. This is a, a PD level class that is our academic purposes and our examination purposes if you want to call it or it will be seen at purposes and so on. This is not a doctoral thesis or defense of any, any such thing. So you will, uh, excuse me, uh, even if I have made some mistakes, I hope. So, what I was trying to tell you was only this. What is an archetype? Archetype is themes, forms, structures that you find in a wide variety of literary works and you find them repeated, repeatedly you find them. And some of these appear in forms like symbolism, lost and found theme, recurring patterns, pre-literary categories, cosmic and epiphany. Epiphany also and we can in the form of proverbs or wise sayings. Wise saying. For example, if you say um, Bacon's Friendship or friendship, you say, no? it cutteth grief in the house, read up the joys and cutteth grief in the house. That's an epiphany. <laughs> yes. A revelation. Send it. So, like that, you have got 
Prevent this wild destiny. Then, in this way, you can go on interpreting uh, works of literature. So, you have got different forms. How to find them? Excavation. What kind of excavation? Literary excavation. We study all of these things. Then, you can use methods like deduction and induction. See? Finally, you come to what we call literary archaeology. So, what is literary? Search for archetypes of in literature is. It is indeed a literary archaeology. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that it, I have made that particular, just one point clear. What is archetypes in literature? How do you, how, in what different forms they appear to us? And uh, why do you call them ar archetypes? How can you find archetypes? Therefore, what do you call archetypal criticism? is called literary archaeology. Thank you very much. I hope that you are enjoying. In that case, you should share this with your friends, your friends and your classmates, and ask them to, to uh, subscribe so that you don't miss updates. Okay. Now, after this next topic will be, I intend to take feminism. As I told you, know, if you send me your uh, your um, what is what your needs now this I am doing this at the request of one of my virtual students uh, that student sent this request to me some two months ago but I had to take I, I at that time I had told that uh, dear student of mine that it will take some time for me to prepare. Okay, uh, I think now it is time and the start of you know, the series. Uh, maybe three or four lectures and then we will, with that we will uh, come to the end of this and then I hope that there's again another request is pending. That is feminism and post-structuralism and all. It takes a lot of time, you know. You know, post-structuralism, you cannot just, uh, this is post-structuralist criticism, I cannot say. Nobody can say for that matter. So it requires a lot of background reading, uh, the Western philosophy, modern Western philosophy, even from Aristotle, Aristotle, Plato, and all those things. You should be at least some idea. Otherwise, we will not be able to do justice to post-structuralism. Mm -hmm. yes. So we will try to do it together. So till then, bye. Have a nice time. Enjoy yourself.